It's been almost a decade since Max Payne, the hard-boiled cop who can't seem to catch a break, last had a reason to slow-motion dive his way through droves of trigger-happy criminals. Now he's back to do exactly that, with a new setting, new haircut, and most notably a new developer, with Remedy no longer in the picture. Max has seen a lot of changes since his last debut, which makes his third outing feel like a significantly different experience. Hardcore fans may not like every tweak done to the franchise this time around, but exciting action, high production values, and surprisingly fun extras make Max Payne 3 a worthy sequel and a ton of violent entertainment. So I guess I've become what they wanted me to be. A killer. Life hasn't gotten any easier for Mr. Payne. Having been kicked off the force for his actions in the last game, and without anything else to really live for, Max has become an alcoholic to cope with his tragic past. His life is in the gutter and going nowhere fast, but takes a turn when he gets an enticing job offer from his old friend Pesos to protect members of the wealthy Bronco family in Brazil. With promises of low-risk work and an easy retirement, Max agrees, figuring he has nothing to lose. His plans of easy living are naturally cut short, as various criminal entities set their sights on the Bronco family, leaving Max to figure out who's behind the attacks and try and keep those under his protection a lot. The story is not all that engaging, at least not when it comes to the basic plot points. Aside from a setup that's not particularly original, most of the revelations and character betrayals aren't difficult to predict. It's not that the narrative is poorly done, it's just been done before. It still provides good context to the thrilling action, even if characters will occasionally make a stupid decision for the sake of setting it up. And the gritty cutscenes are very well directed, though some tend to overstate their welcome a bit. The main driving force that makes what's happening entertaining is the dialogue, especially from Max himself, who always has an inner monologue prepared for any situation, although his justification for some of his actions, such as shaving his head, feel rather forced. So this was it. My easy retirement money. My blood-stained 401k. A chance to drink for free while chaperoning socialites around town and making sure the poor people didn't get too close. The brochure sure didn't mention any of this shit. Past games allowed Max to carry an entire arsenal in his jacket and charge into firefights guns blazing, but that's no longer the case here. Max Payne 3 has been updated with more modern mechanics, meaning you can only carry three weapons around at any given time. A two-handed weapon, like a rifle, and two sidearms which can be used independently or dual-wielded. A cover system has also been incorporated and is essential to survival, as Max is much more fragile this time around, and it works well, allowing you to easily pop in and out to take shots. Various aim modes are available that give you the option of using a generous lock-on feature, letting you easily target threat after threat, or disable lock-on altogether, which Max Payne purists will likely enjoy. Two mainstays of the series, bullet time and bullet dodging, are still here, although one is not quite as effective as it used to be. Slowing down time with the push of a button is a great way to take out groups of enemies quickly, and can be essential if you find yourself low on ammo and need to make every shot count. It's also used at the end of every encounter as a way to indicate you've cleared a room by highlighting your shot as it travels to the last enemy. You even have the option to keep this kill cam going for a while and continually pump round after round into the unlucky participant which is either immensely gratifying or unnecessarily sadistic depending on your viewpoint. Bullet dodging, or diving through the air in slow motion, is good for moving across a room while stylishly taking out a few henchmen in the process, and staying on the ground afterward to keep unloading your weapon is quite satisfying. However, this tactic can also lead to your untimely death, mostly due to the animation system. Max will react to the environment if he bumps into it while diving, which can cancel out the slow motion effect and leave him as a vulnerable lump on the floor. Furthermore, as said earlier, Max is more fragile, and the time it takes him to pick himself up is more than enough for an enemy or two to unload into him. You'll still find plenty of opportunities to jump through the air gunning down criminals, but it's often more effective to use the cover mechanic instead, although the game does have a number of scripted slow motion sequences to make up for this. When you do find yourself hurt after a firefight, then you'll have to use another series staple, painkillers. Aside from their healing benefits, they'll also act as a second chance item. If you're taken out, you'll get a short window of opportunity to take out the last person to shoot you, and if you're successful, you'll be saved from the brink of death and allowed to keep fighting at the cost of a painkiller, which keeps the flow of action going without ever being a crutch to lean on. Outside of the 10-hour story, you'll find an arcade option, which has you playing through the same chapters as you previously did with added variables. 
Score Attack has you trying to rank up the highest score possible by getting kills in quick succession, avoiding damage, and using as little ammunition as possible. New York Minute gives you a minute-long timer, and has you rushing through the levels as quickly as possible with precious seconds added for every kill. Each mode acts as a fun distraction and adds a bit more longevity to the single-player content. Competitive multiplayer is also available, and while this series may not have been asking for it, it works surprisingly well. Aside from standard deathmatch and team deathmatch offerings, there's Painkiller, with two players selected as Max and Pesos trying to stay alive against everyone else, and Gang Wars, which has two teams competing in back-to-back -back objective based game types before ending in a full-scale fight to the death. The online battles are loads of chaotic fun, with players diving and shooting all over the place, and has tons of guns, perks, and outfits to unlock for the dedicated. It even has various kill bonuses called bursts that keep gameplay constantly interesting, such as giving teammates a health boost, marking the position of enemy combatants, or making yourself appear friendly to the other team. The multiplayer probably won't replace your current go-to online shooter in the long run, but you'll undoubtedly enjoy whatever time you do spend with it. Max Payne 3 is a great looking game from top to bottom. Animations are fluid, environments and character models are varied and well detailed, and the seamless transition from cutscenes to gameplay never takes you out of the experience, although the game will frequently bring you out of a cutscene holding the wrong weapon, forcing you to switch back to what you had previously. And skipping story segments on any subsequent playthroughs is not really an option as they're used to mask load times. Various filters like film distortion and text pop-ups are used frequently to add more style to the proceedings, and while novel for a while seem mostly unnecessary and can get a bit irritating, making you wish there was an option to turn them off. Voice acting is exceptional, especially from James McCaffrey reprising his role as Max Payne, and the wide variety of music is always on point, fitting the environment and set pieces nicely. And the band played on. The third chapter in Max Payne's unfortunate life story has been worth the wait, and delivers an engaging action experience in just about every way that counts. The plot is hard to get invested in, and one of the main mechanics of the series, bullet dodging, is not as effective as it once was, but these flaws are minor in this otherwise gratifying, violent adventure with a surprisingly fun multiplayer offering as a bonus. If you're looking for a great time that's sure to get the blood pumping and the trigger finger twitching, look no further than Max Payne 3. <laughs>